I'm Dr. Marcelo Wimuller Campioni, the project lead for research working across landscapes and disciplines, investigating how forest management and buckthorn removal may impact agriculture and soybean yields. I'm here with entomologist Dr. Bob Cook, looking at an ecosystem that is normally hidden from view. The central player is soybean aphid, number one pest of soybean crops. During the growing season, the soybean aphid occurs in our soybean fields. They feed on the sap of the plants and they overcome the plants by sucking out the, uh, the nutrients from the plants. When the soybean aphids are on soybean, it's only the females that occur there. And those females, they don't have to waste time mating because there are no males. They give live birth so they don't waste their time laying eggs. And those babies that they're laying, the live babies, are actually born pregnant. We call that telescoping generations. And this combination of features allows them to have very rapid population growth. Where the soybean aphid goes, beneficial insects that feed on the soybean aphid will often follow. One of these insects is the multicolored Asian lady beetle. It's a predatory insect, a great predator to the aphids, and it'll help to prevent aphid populations from reaching outbreaks, and if they do start to increase, they can suppress the size of those outbreaks. The downside of this predatory insect is that it likes to invade people's homes in the fall, where it can be a nuisance throughout the winter. An additional insect is a tiny parasitic wasp, and this wasp lays its eggs inside the aphids. The larvae of the wasp feeds inside the aphid, eventually killing the aphid, leaving dried, crusty remains that we call a mummy, and the adult wasp will eventually chew its way out of that mummy and start its life cycle over again. A benefit to scouting for soybean aphids actually getting into the fields, estimating aphid populations, and using that threshold of 250 aphids per plant to decide when to apply the insecticides is that it gives these beneficial insects a chance to suppress the aphid populations before we need to apply the uh, insecticides because many of the insecticides we use for soybean aphid management are very toxic to these beneficial insects. Now at this time of the year, the soybean fields are beginning to senesce, day lengths are getting shorter, the soybean aphids are actually leaving the soybean fields uh, by developing a winged form that'll fly to neighboring uh, wood lines like we have here with buckthorn. On the buckthorn, the soybean aphids will mate because you have males and females produced at that time and they'll lay eggs and it's that egg stage that will survive the winter. So Bob, do we know which buckthorn the aphids are queuing into for that overwintering? We know a lot about soybean aphids when they're on the soybean, but when they're on the buckthorn, we, we know relatively little there. We don't know which buckthorn plants they're queuing in on, how far they'll fly, and we also don't know if, if we manage the buckthorn or the, the aphids on the buckthorn, what impact that will necessarily have to the populations in the soybean fields the next year. Thank you, Bob. Let's take a look at who else finds a home on buckthorn. Oat crown rust is a fungi, a pathogen that thrives in oats and barley, reducing crop yields by as much as 40%. When it's not on oats or barley, this pathogen lives on buckthorn, causing small brown leaf spots that aren't problematic to buckthorn. Buckthorn grows abundantly in the upper Midwest. It's everywhere. How did this tree that offers safe harbor for the soybean aphid and oak crown rust become so prominent? It had a little help from other species new to North America. These other new species came with the first European settlers way back in the 1600s on plants and in the soil. In the soil from Europe, there were earthworms. Earthworms are not native to most of Minnesota. They are not good for native forest as they gobble up the leaves on the forest floor, disrupting an ecosystem that coexists with the native plants, disrupting things like microbes, fungi, insects, plants, and wildlife. The European earthworm and its predator, the Asian flatworm, digest the plant matter and turn it into soil. This warm digested soil is inviting for new species of plants to move in. Buckthorn seeds like bare mineral soil, compounding the problem. People first brought buckthorn to North America in the mid-1800s and sold it as an ornamental landscaping plant. Buckthorn was planted in yards, 
in towns, and on farms. People planted it because it made a great hedgerow. If we only knew then what we know now. But there's one more non-native player in this story. In honor of the birds from Shakespeare's writing, a group of Shakespeare fans brought over European starlings from across the Atlantic, had a ceremony, and let them loose in Central Park. That was 1890. These birds took to their new landscape and, along with other species, helped spread buckthorn seeds. Seeds of buckthorn may look inviting to wildlife, but are not nutritious. The birds dropped seeds on the soil that was made friendly for invasives by the advanced team of earthworms living and multiplying below our feet. Buckthorn gained a foothold, invading the landscape and the soybean aphid moved in, causing problems in the field starting around 2000. We use a number of techniques to manage soybean aphid populations, from aphid-resistant soybean seeds to insecticides and predator insects. These treatments focus on where the soybean aphid lives in the summer, soybean fields. But what can we learn if we investigate their winter home, buckthorn? That's what we're researching right now. The people that manage the lands where these ecosystems live, private landowners, state, and federal land managers may have different overarching goals. But one thing they have in common, they all are negatively impacted by buckthorn. Looking at this web of organisms and how they are connected to buckthorn helps us understand how to approach managing pests that span across multiple ecosystems. We may not know the exact relationship between soybean aphid and buckthorn, but we do know that managing buckthorn has a host of other ecosystem benefits.